Okay, good morning. We're here with Randall Amoko with um, the Homeowners Design Center, and he's going to share with us a little bit about a recent kitchen remodel that he just did. Welcome, Randall. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, okay, so first off, I want to find out a little bit about um, the customers. How, how did they find you or hear about Homeowners Design Center? Um, actually, this is kind of an unusual project, uh, only in the fact that it uh, is a relative to the owner. So we have to make sure that we didn't screw this one up really bad. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, of course, you didn't screw, you don't screw up anything, but, but you did an extra special job maybe on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so. And this is just for just for Rick's reference. It won't be added to the blog. But um, can we get their names? I understand it's her aunt and uncle. Correct. Yeah. So it's her um, auntie Patty and her uncle Mike Magita. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And then um, what was um, what was their goal? What was the state of the project when they first brought it to you? Well, the, the, the project was, uh, again, you know, as most projects are, you know, there's some sort of flow problem that they're having, and they wanted to have a meeting area where it would be less cramped. And the way the kitchen was set up, it was, it was set up exactly the way you see it in the picture, with the exception of the island was a smaller table, that was actually set closer to where the range was, and there was actually a peninsula with overhead cabinets. So oh, wow. right now, the way you see it, it's it's a U shape with an island in it. But originally, when I was in there, it was actually a circle with overhead cabinets that actually separated the kitchen area from the living area, which you cannot see because uh, that's where the pictures taken being taken care uh, taken from. But uh, it was a circle with an island in the center and a peninsula and wall cabinet. So it it was almost a separate room. And so what they wanted to do was they wanted to open all of that up. And it looks like, I'm not sure if you did anything with this, but the ceilings are very high. I mean, it's a very beautiful space now. And you were talking about overhead. So did you do anything with the ceiling or did you just take those out? How how did you do, how did that work? Yeah, so, yeah, so what we ended up doing was, the first thing we ended up doing was clearing out that peninsula and taking away those overhead cabinets. And then the second thing that was really, really important was um, we actually moved the refrigerator actually back two feet. And so the way the, the kitchen was actually set, there were closets that were in an adjacent room that they weren't using. Well, they were using it, but it's, you know, we were able to, make closet on the other wall in the other room. But what that ended up uh, help, helping us do was it actually pushed the kitchen and made it wider by two feet. So as you're looking at the refrigerator area, you, you notice there's a return on that white wall where, the, um, where that doorway is between the range and the refrigerator. Actually, the re refrigerator is actually push, pushed in about two more feet. So what it did was it helped open up the space, made it wider, and it also gave us a bigger table in the center so that way more people could gather around. And this, well, I'm looking at the picture, did you, did you add a sink where the closet used to be? It looks like something is added or just some more cabinet space or something. It looks like it's in that maybe where the white wall comes out. Does that make sense what I'm asking? Yeah, so where the, where the white wall return is and there's a clock on it. Mm-hmm. Do you see that? Yeah. yeah. So that wall, we we actually made the kitchen, uh, we actually pushed all the things on that side. So the microwave and the and the refrigerator and that small countertop, we actually pushed it back two feet. So in that way, uh, it made that space wider by two feet. Yeah, that and that makes a big difference in a kitchen when you're moving oh, yeah. around with cooking. And... Yeah, tremendously. Well, and, and you know, it it's not unusual, you know, we see this uh, a lot in kitchens where people will have their dining room table in the middle of the kitchen. Um, so that's what they actually had. They had a little table in there. So we're able not only to, you know, give them a bigger table for them to actually go ahead and get more people around, but um, we also were able to add storage, you know, where... Um, you know, they it was empty. Actually, it's kind of funny. They had, I think they had some stuff that was actually stored at the table, but 
smell that's not seen and you know it it cleans up the space and yeah it does a tremendous amount of things and now they might not have shared this with you but we always just love to find out a little more details if we can was there um just in and of itself just the aesthetics of being in a kitchen and having it feel open and not you know you closed in while you're cooking but do they host a lot do they have guests over was that kind of a um Motivation yeah, so or? it's funny. They they were there. The table was almost about the size of a card table, you know. So, and then they would have everyone gather around it, you know. And and it's funny because um, you know they bring up a bunch of chairs and and it just seemed like there were more people than table. But I mean that's you know that's kind of the way they they entertain. So now it's having a bigger table in the center actually we're able to get you know so we actually you know they're actually able to move more chairs in you know like you can't really see it in the space but we could actually add in four more chairs to this so then that way you know they could actually get more people in and then be comfortable sitting around the table which i think is really important right so much more conducive to having guests over and being able to still you know warm bread while people are sitting at the table and not be you know, all, all on top of each other. So it's beautiful design. Um, yeah, so or, or, to... or blocking off an aisle, you know. So what was one of the things that was also happening was when somebody would pull a chair out, like, you know, as an example, no one would be able to, you know, move around, you know, wouldn't be able. So they couldn't use the kitchen while people were sitting there. And now, you know, they can actually do that, which is, you know, I think tremendous for them. Right, it definitely, as I'm looking at it, it looks like there's so there's so much ample counter space now. And like you said, it's far enough, you know, distance between that and the table that they could, you know, even put drinks out or, you know, things like that. It's very, very well done. Um, so some specifics. Tell us a little bit about the cabinets, um, the materials, anything. Yeah, so these cabinets are made by, let's see, who are these cabinets made by? I believe this is Dura Supreme. So, um, so this is a uh, this is a manufacturer, not an assembler. You know, so uh, one of the distinctions in cabinetry is that you have people who just assemble products versus people who actually manufacture all their their own pieces. So, this this particular line of cabinetry. Um, the the cabinet company out of Minnesota makes their own doors. They actually, um, uh, you know, construct their, you know, they they will book page, you know, all the drawer fronts, you know, so you get a very consistent look, especially in wood. Okay, and the the and that is beautiful wood. So can you tell us a little bit about the color choice and the, the actual the color, the shade? It's a very kind of pretty cherry color. What I'm seeing. Correct. Yeah. So it's a it's a cherry wood cabinet with a, a veneer door. So you know, it gives it you know, you know one of the things is maintenance. You know, so they wanted a product where they didn't have to maintain it by you know uh, you know constant dusting. You know, so one of the the pluses uh, on a on a flat veneer door is that you're able to you know go ahead and not have a ledge that you have to dust all the time, which is something that's you know a big plus. Right. Okay. And um, tell us a little bit about the countertops. They're beautiful. Um, kind of. I'll go ahead and let you talk about it. Yeah. So, so this is a natural stone countertop. So you know, I know the movement right now is to go towards, you know, um, uh, quartz material. But you know, to me, you know, natural stone still is a, you know, is a is a one of a kind piece. You know, we're able to. Um, you know, get, I think, more natural colors, especially in the greens. You know, the greens end up being, you know, more of a natural look. And then, you know, this cabinet has, I mean, I'm sorry, this countertop actually has some veining in it, so there's a lot of movement, which is kind of a nice thing. And and when you get them, and, you know, you, there are two choices a lot of times, and this is this is interesting for you to see, is that in a prefabricated top, you know, so there are two different ways to go with natural stone. One is to have it fabricated from a slab. The other is for it to be prefabricated. And in a prefabricated top, in order to get the width, you know, so as you look at, like, as you're looking at the island, this is a good example. 
So the island looks like it's a thick piece, but it's actually a knot. You know, what it is is it's not an inch and a half thick. It's actually three-quarters. The material is three-quarters, and then they actually glue material, which is another three-quarters, and then they'll go ahead and flat polish it, you know, to give it, you know, that width or that thickness. Many times, you know, when you buy a prefabricated top, they're actually more concerned with the color and less with the movement of the stone, you know. So um, when they glue the two pieces of, of material together, you can see that the two materials didn't join up. In this case, in a, in a fabricated top, where you're looking at that middle table, what they've done is they've cut the piece, and then what they do is they flip it down so that way it looks continuous. So the veining, you can see right in the center of the table, runs front to back and then runs down, right, the edge. And, and that's important so in, in getting a material that, that looks like it belongs together. Okay, that, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so it almost looks like a waterfall. Like, you know, if you look at the veining, it looks like the, if that was a, a piece of water, the veining is running across and then down, you know, so, yeah, yeah, you don't get that effect unless you're doing something that's fabricated from a slab. It's just something that's a little more attention to detail and, yeah. and a better finished product. Yeah. Um, as far as the appliances, you did mention, and I am seeing how you, you were able to move the refrigerator back, um, but what specific, did you guys handle the appliances, and what specific yeah, appliances did you receive? Yeah, the appliances were done by, uh, by KitchenAid. Okay. Yeah, and, and, the and that was like done through. Steel? Yeah, stainless steel was done through Pacific Appliance Group. Okay, and then the lighting. Did you choose the lighting? It looks a little bit like pendant lighting. Is that correct? Yeah, these are pendant lighting, and this is done by Lighting Elegance. Okay, they're beautiful. Very, very simple, but um, good statement pieces. Very nicely done. Um, and tell and us a little bit. Especially the high ceiling, you need something I think to break up the space a little bit. Yeah, so. Right. I was I was thinking that, and I was just thinking, what would I have chosen for lighting? And the pendant lighting was surprising to me, but it's very perfect because it's, it's just enough, you know, to, to bring in the light there and to have some kind of statement pieces, but it doesn't – the whole point was opening up the kitchen, and it, you, you don't block any of the openness, you know, with the, with the pendant. So I think that was a good choice. Um, as far as the flooring, did you guys do anything with the flooring here? Yeah. So the, the the flooring material is a vinyl product, right? So it's a vinyl tile. And and a lot of people right now are moving towards these vinyl products because it's a more resilient floor. Um, it, it has come a tremendously long way. It's beautiful. I mean, I almost, I couldn't tell exactly what it was from the picture because, you know, you've got the dimensions, then, the different dimensions. Yeah. And then we did a custom yeah. carpet runner for them. Yeah, I really like it. It's almost like um, a room within a room in a, in a really beautiful way. It breaks up the space, and even that tends to open it up, if that makes sense, yeah. um, just the delineation there. Um, so any, you, you have mentioned a few obstacles that you were able to circumvent, you know, with, with the closet space and then opening up the ceiling, you know, the overhead cabinets, getting rid of them. Were there any other things that posed a specific challenge or – things you kind of had to figure out um, that we haven't mentioned yet? Um, no, what, an interesting feature of this kitchen is that there's two faucets. You know, so one of the things um, that they need to do is because, you know, when somebody's doing the dishes or somebody's prepping, you know, so a lot of times people will split, you know, the, the faucet out to some place you know, away from the original faucet. But, you know, to me now, a lot of times you end up, you know, um, not making total use of the space, you know. So as an example, you know, one of the problems when we do two faucets is that we actually create another cabinet that, you know, something else could go wrong in. So another plumbing piece and another part of the kitchen that something can go wrong with. And then also we create a cabinet that we can't store things in. You know, so if you think about all the things that you currently have right now in your sink cabinet, you know, you actually create another cabinet someplace else in your kitchen that will be, you know, used for, you know, cleansing products and, 
you know, cockroach medicine or whatever it is that you end up putting inside those kind of cabinets. But you, know, but, yeah, and plumbing, correct. Yeah, so in this case, now we're able to add another faucet into into the kitchen, but still in that same sink cabinet, which I think, you know, was, you know, actually, you know, well thought out. Okay, and I've, I think we've covered pretty much everything, but one question that I always really love to ask, and especially um, in regards to the beginning of a conversation with how these were very important customers, all your customers are important, but these especially high pressure. Um, so were they happy? Were they pleased with the outcome? It's a beautiful, to me, it, it looks like they have, would have gotten everything they asked you for. Yeah, they were extremely pleased with the, the way that it came out. You know, uh, it, it, we... We take a lot of the surprise, I think, out of, you know, the finished product, you know, with the computer software that we use, you know. So we're able to, you know, recreate colors and create, you know, the the layout. So actually, you know, it's not as big a surprise, I think, you know, because they're able to see it. I think what's, what's always nice at the end is after it's all said and done, you know, and then they start using it, you know, they're really, really happy with, with, you know, after the first party that they throw, you know, then they can say, hey, it worked out terrific, you know, so. Right. And for the for listeners who may not be familiar with you, can you just very briefly um, tell them a little bit about the software that you're speaking of? Because I know what you're talking about, and it's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. But, so the computer software that we use is a, a computer software called 2020 uh, and design, and, and the software creates the ability for us to, um, plan out spaces two dimensionally, but also after we've planned it out two dimensionally, we're able to render render it in a three dimensional environment, virtual environment, because you can actually walk around in it. So you're able to actually see prospectively, you know, what the kitchen looks like, you know, how each space is going to be used, and actually it is exactly the way it's going to be done, um, you know, as it's rendered. So it, you know, emotionally, you know, I think it helps you because, it, it, like I said, it does take some of the, you know, to me, some of the surprise out of it. But, you know, I mean, surprises are good and bad. You know, I, I like surprises some of the times, you know, but for the most part, I really don't like surprises. You know, I, I really want to know, and especially in this type of situation where this is, a rather large purchase, it's and there is kind of a lot yeah. at stake, you know, I mean, I, I think you you don't want a lot of surprises. Right. So it really does provide that peace of mind that they're getting to see what it will look like before a wall is knocked down, before they've yeah. purchased all the materials. And I think that's something that is priceless for, for someone like me who's a little bit of a worrier. I think that would be yeah. wonderful <laughs> to have a picture yeah. in my mind of, okay, this is going to work. Um, well, I mean, I think the, I think that one quote that you said, I mean, and it's you know, it's it's one of the things that we use all the time, and that is peace of mind. I mean, that is that is huge, actually. Because I think people aren't worried. I mean, they're they're willing to make the financial investment. They just want to know that it's a smart investment and that they'll be happy with the outcome. You know, I mean, it's your yeah. home; it's worth the investment. But being able to Absolutely. see it, I think, really helps. Yeah. So. Okay, thank you so much, Randall. Um, any other closing statements, anything else that you'd like to add or like for us to be aware of about the project or you guys no, no, in general? No. No, I think that's about it, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for your time. I know how busy you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks. Have a great day, Randall. Okay, bye.